Hi, I'm Michael Wojcik. When I first moved to the woods of western Massachusetts, I had the great advantage of having a very quick immersion into the landscape, into what was growing here, into what lived here, into the ecology of the place. I had moved here to go to school to study conservation biology, so I had lots of practical reasons to learn about the land surrounding the area where I was living. I was doing coursework where I needed to do field inventories of trees and plants. I was studying critters and insects and birds. And above all those practical reasons, which I needed to follow to figure out my coursework and to finish my coursework, what I really found was that I found a very profound and very fast sense of connection to this new place where I was living. And I'm really interested in exploring the grounds of Roe with a group and with the questions that the group brings in and really curious about what we're going to find and what we're going to discover. And we'll start first by looking at identifying characteristics of trees. The bark, which will be visible even after the leaves have fallen in November. We'll find buds that are already present, uh, waiting for next spring. We'll find some leaves on the ground that we might be tempted to identify and attach to a specific tree. We'll find the, the needles of conifers. And as we start to look at these identifying characteristics, what that really does is opens up a whole world of other questions that we can ask, which is why? Why do all these characteristics exist and why are they different? One of the greatest things I learned from Tom Wessels, a really terrific ecologist and a terrific teacher who was a mentor of mine, was the permission to ask questions. And what I find is that when I can ask a question, I already know a lot about something to be able to formulate that question. So we're going to find a lot of questions. Why is the bark of paper birch white? Why does it peel? Why do we find buds already present on the twigs of trees in November, well before the spring bloom? And as we start to answer these questions, we're going to actually even undercover more questions. We can look at the functionality of trees themselves. We can look at this white birch and investigate how it actually helps this tree protect itself thermally and provides thermal protection. How the peeling of this bark actually helps to facilitate bark photosynthesis, which is a tiny amount of supplemental energy that can actually be produced by the bark itself. When we look at the buds, we'll see them all completely formed and find out that they were formed in the summer when trees were at the height of their photosynthetic activity where they had the energy to produce those buds in the first place. And inside each bud we'll investigate the fact that there's completely formed miniature leaves and flowers all just waiting for spring. And those questions really get opened up into a whole other world of looking at the environment and the other organisms that live around trees as well. <clears throat> we can look at the characteristics of paper birch, this peeling bark, this white bark, and find that it really helps facilitate this tree to, to comp outcompete all other woody plants at very high latitudes and high altitudes. Uh, paper birch is one of the most northerly sited hardwood species in North America. We can look at buds and, and really start to think about a little bit of time travel in a way. Because as we're looking at those buds in fall and winter, what we're really experiencing are the conditions that existed the previous summer when they grew. And we're looking forward to spring when they're actually going to bloom as well. And what those blooms look like, how many leaves, the vigor of them, the how many flowers, really has a lot to do with the conditions that happened in the previous summer. So there's this expansiveness that happens really by honing our senses of perception and starting to look at the characteristics of trees to start with. And it's a lot of fun. And one of the great benefits is that it really brings us a sense of connection. Uh, we'll, we'll develop a sense of connection to the land that we're exploring at the Rose Center. And we'll also develop this sense of connection and this ability to do that in the places that we love and frequent. And really develop a greater sense of feeling at home.